Beginning the live stream presently. Beginning the live stream presently. Stream pre I've got audio. Now all I need is some viewers. Come forth, viewers. Come forth and say hello in the live chat. For I am now live and awaiting your hello, lulz, Klingon. Kapla! Welcome! And more is coming, Luke! Welcome, Luke, my friend, my space friend! And more will be coming shortly. Come forth. Hopefully I'm perfectly audible. If not, speak up like a Klingon and let me know. We all have to be forward and confident in this video because we are uh, channeling Klingons. So, um, here we are. Those of you that were with me, <laughs> now it's been almost like five weeks. Remember the T3 Mover Klingon Troop Transport. And uh, it has been modeled. It is ready for texturing. There will be some more details I will be adding to it. Uh, there will probably be some sort of thruster assembly I will add back here. Maybe some disruptor turrets or something like that. But for the most part, uh, we will uh, have this, we will call this completed except for the texturing. And if we do a quick render, oh, this is another ship. Ignore that. But so okay so here it is i put a generic texture on here it's not what it's going to look like um so here's what i've done obviously the first thing i had to do was break up all the faces and polys on this called uvw unwrapping and it was just this is just the main hull. i have to do the main hull, then i have to do this uh this this section right here which connects to the boom section so there's three things that we can texture here. I'm going to be on this for about an hour and a half, and then I'm going to go. But um, maybe, I don't know, we'll, we'll kind of play it by ear and go with the flow. Like the Makbara. In the Makbara, we go with the flow. It looks like a dung beetle. Well, you know, thank you, I guess. Dung beetles are strong. They roll shit around all day. <laughs> all right. Um, so here we are. So what I've done is I have, let me just hide this. I'm gonna hide the rest, hide unselected. So I have this main hull section here. Um, if we go to the map editor, the UVW map editor here, you can see the faces are laid out. If I select, for example, for example, if I select this part, oh, let's go to face mode, face mode. Uh, if I select this part, you can see here what's happening, right? So this is how everything's going to be mapped on, right? And um, what I did was instead of mapping this out into one complete section, I decided to mirror it. So whatever I draw on this section will also appear on the other side. The only time I don't want to do that is when I'm dealing with markings like NCC numbers and whatnot. But it's going to be all in Klingon. The markings are going to be in Klingon, so nobody can read Klingon. Not really. Some people, some of you can. I know some of you can because you're ultra nerds. But mostly people cannot uh, cannot read Klingon. So I'm happy to just mirror the texture over on the top and the bottom. Rotate it this way. You can see here, this is all going to be a texture. If we go up towards the front, you can see here, this is going to be a texture. By the way, I should just note that um, I have already built like three or four other ships for the Four Years War series. And um, I've been pretty busy with it, which I haven't put a lot of videos out uh, lately. But I've also been focusing on my own personal fitness and well-being a little bit because I'm starting to realize that if I do sit in front of a computer 8 to 12 hours a day, I could die uh, without doing a lot of exercise. But anyway, I digress. So here, here's what it looks like. Now, what I need to do 
is make a bitmap out of this so I can begin working with it. Uh, so I'm going to render a UVW template. I'm going to make it nice and big. Let's go uh, 2000 by, oh, not 200, 2000 by 2000 pixels so that I'll have plenty of room to get some details. So I'm rendering it. So here's the template. This is what I'm going to work with. I'm going to save this as a bitmap. That's a, this is a folder for a different ship. So I'm going to go in here and find my, oh, let's see, this is the wrong place. Find my T3 mover folder and save the bitmap there. And I can start working with it. And I'm going to call this a main hull. And you can see the original facet drawing there. Um, oh, also, by the way, those of you who are just joining, hello, guys. Hello, Sulphurus. You haven't missed anything. We've just started. If you've, those of you who are just joining, be sure to give it a like, and we'll get more people in here. Also, you may have noticed along the side there is a super chat menu. So if you want me to play any of these CG clips, for example, number one looks like King Log Sorry, there's no sound. I have a six CG clips that I will play in exchange for super chats. Scout being blown up by a Klingon V4 cruiser. So it looks just like that, and I've got number one, Saladin Destruction. Two is the assault uh, gunboat from Star Wars taking out a cloak-shaped fighter. Number three, uh, no, this is 3D Studio Max Sulfurus. Maya is, um, you can do almost everything in Maya. Most of these uh, translate to each other. Blender, 3DS Max, uh, Maya, Lightwave, most of these things you can do uh, cross-platform. Uh, so this is not Maya, this is 3D Studio Max. But um, Blender is getting better and better, and because it is virtually free and 3D Studio Max is not. I may be switching totally to Blender someday, but not yet. But anyway, so if you want a Super Chat, uh, you can see the menu there. Um, I'll play a, a couple more of them. Here is, for example, the Winged Defender rising out of the clouds from my first Winged Defender uh, movie that I did. And I, this is my favorite, probably my favorite uh, Romulan ship from anything uh, or favorite Star Trek one of my favorite Star Trek ships clearly so if you want me to play any of those send a super chat and uh, any amount and put the number that you want the menus on the left and I will uh, play them for you and uh, so let's get on to texturing when will we start to see resurrected Starfleets in Starfleets in Anton and oh in action um, so, when will we see, uh, start to see resurrected Starfleets in action? Well, you kind of see small clips of them. Of course, it, the Four Years War videos do have some, some ships in action. But, uh, anyway, so I've got some, I've got a map to build. I'm using Jass Paint Shop Pro because it's easy to use. Um, I also am working on an L6 Defender class frigate. Klingon frigate, and this is the main hull texture from that. And I'm kind of using this as a color template for my uh, T3 mover. And here is the UVW template for the main hull. So, yep, I am uh, doing some UVW mapping. Um, I've already went ahead and mapped out where the, the, the coordinates on everything. So that part you're not going to see. It, it's kind of a pain in, in the butt to, to do that, but uh, I've already done that. Oh, do you know what? I haven't done this part right here, this little egg-shaped module. I haven't done any UVW mapping on that, but I'm not going to worry about that. I might not even get to the, that by the end of the stream, but I will texture this. The first thing I'm going to do, though, is go ahead and get a base color, and I'm using um, this other texture from the L6 as a template, so I'm just going to Create a new layer. Layers are good. I'm going to call this layer base. This is how I do it. I don't do very detailed 3D models, but I do 
uh, fairly detailed textures, I've been known to do that. So I can change the transparency so I can see what faces I'm working with. If I remember correctly, this is going to be the top right here, so I'll start with that. And uh, let me just make sure. Boom, 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 boom. Let's select some faces here and make sure I'm in the right place. Yep, this is the top. So I will go ahead and start there. So let's do it. Um, what I like to do first of all is go ahead and add some whole lines. So I'll just call this layer lines, create a new layer called lines. And uh, this sort of lays out the structure of the hull and keep things separated. So that's the first thing I always do. I usually do the lower detailed textures I do two different layers called lines so this will be the, the the darker layer and that's going to be black I think the first thing I want to do is kind of add some separation between the pylon and the main hull so I'm gonna put a big ass line right there and let's turn the base up a little more so you can see that and then uh, yes these basically I first learned a 3d model so that I could um, add starship models to games and uh, so I'm sort of it's it's in my nature to make some lower detail stuff but with efficiency and high textures I'm gonna make another line over here which kind of separates the area where there's a big bulbous part in the main hall from the edge of the main hall so I'm gonna add a line right there Boom. Actually, you know what? Let me control Z. I'm going to add a little bit of a curve here. Most people can't see that I've, I've made like an individual line, but luckily you can add kind of like bezier curves here. So I will probably be doing a little bit of that. Boom. Okay, so I've got two lines there. And this is this is where we can take creative freedom here. Here's the original FASA drawing. Obviously, they had the same idea I did. Um, I think this actually might be a redraw of uh, of this. And um, but anyway, looks like they had the same idea that I did. So there's going to be a line going down the pylon here, and obviously a lot of junk up here. But um, I will go ahead and start with. I'm going to do another line right here, and I think, like all Klingon ships, there should be some sort of heat vent in the pylon. Like you see in the D7 that there's a heat vent. This one doesn't have it, but I will be taking some creative license and I'll be adding that. In fact, let me go ahead, I'll just outline this line, take this one down, and um, so Tell you what, let me go ahead. So for the textures, I'm using Jass Paint Shop Pro. This is an old version. The newer versions look a whole lot like Photoshop. You can do pretty much the same thing with Photoshop. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and apply this texture here, and we can start to see what it looks like. We'll just, I'm going to save this now as um, we're going to make, we're actually going to make this the the bump texture so I'm gonna go call this main hull underscore bump boom alright so now we go back over to max we're gonna go open our material editor and uh, so right now it's using something from another ship I think it's using something from a d7 but we're gonna change the diffuse which is uh, basically just the the base colors and we're gonna change the file uh, this is yeah that's from the d7 so let me go in here and find the t3 mover where are you t3 this is not is this an alphabetical order oh this is not this is not the right one okay so i need to go documents a1 projects and uh, T3 mover. 
there we are and main hull even though this is the bump map for now I'm gonna call I'm gonna use this for the diffuse diffuse map and I can't see anything Let's see is this displaying show material in the viewport okay yeah so there's a crude rendering of what it's gonna look like in the viewport at least but I'm gonna go ahead and copy this down to my bump map whoa the bump is at a rating of 50 let me bring that down to 20 all right so the diffuse and the bump are the, essentially the same they won't be later so let's see how this is looking okay it's a little bit deep um, so Flora says I'm stuck with paint.net oh yeah and alternatively GIMP since the Photoshop CS6 installation and he also says there's a specific color theme that was uh, given to the T3 well basically I'm sticking with sort of an old series Klingon color um, so pretty much you know grays this is all old series style aesthetic if I ever do a motion picture version I will probably um, change things quite a bit but I'm sticking with uh, at least for the four years of war videos and old series aesthetic and I've, I've lessened the bump amount just a bit and I think that that looks better I'm also probably going to lighten the diffuse color on uh, these lines as well but I always start out with lines but for fun I think what I will do yeah unfortunately for this particular ship there are no colorized illustrations so now if if we were going to the motion picture era saying that this is oh this is a refit version then uh, then probably it would uh, be much more detailed there'd be all kinds of crazy Aztecing and plating on it all that kind of good stuff Let me see how many viewers I've got right now about eight viewers we need more viewers be sure to, to give uh, give the video a like if you haven't already we'll get more viewers in here but uh, anyway so continuing on so I've lightened that a little bit down to 65% transparency on uh, the lines let me go ahead and add another layer here. I'm going to call this bump low. This will be all the really dark low stuff. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and start adding that characteristic Klingon grate or vent that is on all Klingon ships right here. And I'm actually going to make it a gradient so that it'll look like there are vents. So to do that, you can do gradients in, in uh, Photoshop and other versions of uh, Jazz Paint Shop. So the gradient colors definitely need to be darker, different, and they're going to need to be okay. That part is going to need to be this way, to a 70 degree angle, and let's just go right about here and let's shave this down get rid of this part so it's kind of in line with this line right here for some reason my selection is uh, currently a rounded rectangle let's change back that to just a regular rectangle don't need this part oh Subtract this part and we're going to subtract this part right here and we're going to fill this with my gradient color oh this isn't even right let me fix this see this version of, of, of jazz this doesn't always um, keep the gradient that I want let's see repeat whoa I'm going to change this color here in a bit. Let's go with 30 repeats. And then we're going to go black and dark gray. Black and dark gray. And fill that. So now it does look like kind of a heat grate right there. Um, the line isn't perfect, but perfection is a lie. 
Sulfurus asks, do you think texture mapping is harder for Starfleet ships or Klingon ships? Uh, I think texture mapping for the saucer of of uh, Starfleet ships is a little bit more difficult than most, but otherwise they're pretty much the same. Depends on the ship. Any any kind of ship with a lot of rounded edges like um, like this one can sometimes be difficult. So yeah, I find that texturing does to, you know texturing just takes time. All right, so I'm going to add some more lines here, kind of like the illustration. Let me find where's that top view illustration. I'm going to add some more lines in here. I've added the grading, but I'm going to, for creative purposes, just like the D7s, I'm going to add some more. We'll, we'll do some dark lines here. And let's do, let's kind of offset this a little bit. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and make another layer called light lines. And that's going to be about half the depth as far as uh, detail as the dark lines. So in this case, quite a bit less. I always like to add some kind of, along the edge of the hull, some sort of trim uh, along the edges as if there's a separate plate separating these things. So we'll add sort of a trim there. And we'll add another one there. And let's add one along the edge of this uh, of this heat vent in the pylon. And I'll answer y'all's questions here in just a second. All right, now I can kind of just go crazy with some lines if I want to. And again, this is a very sort of creative license, creative uh, freedom here. And uh, there we go. Deromer2000 says, really cool. Uh, what is your all-time favorite non-Federation ship? That would be you. The, the Klingon Katinga, if we're talking canon. It's probably that and the Warbird are, are very, uh, very close. The the Deridex Warbird, uh, the uh, non-canon Romulan Winged Defender, hands down. In fact, if y'all want to see a CG clip of that, uh, there is uh, there is a super chat available for that. Uh, if you want to see the super chat, I will play a CG clip of, of those ships. Just put the number that you want to play. But if you don't want to send a super chat, that's cool. Just uh, give me a like or share the video later uh, in some way or share it. And that would be almost as good. Okay, so I'm going to add some more trim here. Let's continue this. It's getting time to do a render pretty soon, I think. Um, and we'll add trim right there. You can see this in all the Federation ships. They kind of put put like a, a trim plate on the edge of all of their edges and to me it, it, it creates a pretty nice aesthetic I feel like there needs to be more lines here let's let's change this up a bit let's put like a double line right here getting these lines straight is some time sometimes a challenge boom and boom I'm probably gonna lighten the light lines a little bit more Boom. All right. Yeah, let's turn those down just a bit. We'll go 40, 40, 70. I got to remember these numbers. Okay. And let's back out and have a look at this. Let's turn the uh, base back up. We're going to make this the bump map. Save. Come back to 3ds Max. Do a render. How's that looking? So I'd say I'd say that's kind of done a lot. I'm let's see. I'm a little bit. I'm gonna let it go. But I, I kind of wish that this um, this event right here was a little bit bigger. But I'm gonna let it go. This is kind of this is not a warship. This is a troop transport. So 
you know, it's something new, I guess. Uh, bah, bah, bah. All right, so time to move up. Let's start moving up towards the center here. I'll probably do some more pylon work later, but I'm going to move up towards the center. Definitely need a lot more line work along here. I'm going to make this some light lines. Let's just go ahead and add some more trim along the outside of the main hall edge. And just come all the way around. Kind of doing the whole plate lines is one of the more time consuming things. Um, the other really time consuming thing about texturing a starship is the specular, um, the specular Azteking if somebody wants to do that. And there are ways, like for example, if you have a look at um, what I've done on this L6, I do have a specular spec plates layer. Looks like this. So this is kind of just generic that I made, but it doesn't look nearly as good as manually going in and adding all the uh, the specular Azteking. Uh, the doing it doing it the generic way and um, when I'm making a model I'm really proud of I will go ahead and manually draw in all those plates and it looks just a whole lot better okay so this trim is there I'll go ahead and add another trim along here let's go here 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 just kind of following the contours of the model for what I'll be using it for it's okay if it's a little bit imperfect I like to say perfection is a lie because it is um, sometimes when things turn out to be imperfect you end up with interesting results that you didn't expect that are kind of cool but anyway Sulphurus says in the source engine you still have to use normal map for reflections and their fall only uh, yes yeah, every rendering engine is a little bit different with its own peculiarities. Sometimes the lighting is different. Sometimes they bounce photons everywhere and sometimes they don't use that. And even in 3D Studio Max, there's a lot of different rendering types available. Um, and in other 3D programs, there's all kinds of different uh, rendering types. I've noticed in Blender, they kind of have a package that combines with the Unity game engine. And um, unfortunately, I've never really messed with game engines much. Perhaps someday I will. If I ever find the time to do that, I'll, I'll do that. All right, so I'm just continuing to add some lines. I, need, I think I need to add some connective plating over here going across. Um, and this kind of it's kind of become second nature after a while you just kind of get a feel for you know how the the hull is constructed and you just kind of add lines wherever you feel they, they need to be kind of like a, well, kind of like a painting I guess I feel there should be some wherever you feel there should be some structure and you know where there might be some hull plating luckily you can just kind of go along with the polygons and that kind of works fairly well although you don't always want to follow the polygons sometimes you need to deviate a little bit okay in fact I'm gonna do something a little bit different right here I think what I'm gonna do here is add like some double lines here boom 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 and let's just go again boom probably could have copied this this should make for some interesting detail and let's just go ahead and 
do another one right there. All right. Luckily, I won't have to mirror all this because the mapping is already mirrored. Um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'm using the bump map for both the color and the texture for now, but that will change. That will change. Boom, boom. All right, let's have a look. That's looking pretty good. It is true you can get carried away. Sometimes I get carried away by adding too much detail or I'll have a, a whole lot of detail in one place and not a lot of detail in another. And then, um, and then it can be kind of funky. So that's why I like to go back and render a lot. Um, and uh, dedicated normal map. No, probably not. I'll probably just, I'm not sure exactly what you mean. I've got to admit. I don't know everything about 3D modeling. Um, there's still a lot I need to learn. Most of what I've learned, I've, I've taught myself, so I don't have much in the way of formal education, but I'm always open to learning new things. And so I'm not sure exactly what you mean by dedicated normal map. I guess you mean dedicated uh, color map, diffuse map. If that is what you mean, then yes, I will be. I'll be saving a separate file. In fact, I think normally what I would do is bring the, in fact, I'll do that now for the light, for the lines, I, I normally go a little bit lighter for the diffuse map. So I'm going to bring this to 60. I'm going to bring this down to about 30. And we will call this, might as well go ahead and get a diffuse, whoa, diffuse map on the way. So we'll call this, and 3D Studio Max is called a diffuse map. I think that's what you mean by normal map. So we'll just call this diffuse. Diffuse means color in 3D Studio Max. So that's what I'm doing here. Um, you go to my material editor and change this to the diffuse map, which is also where I'll put my clean on emblems and text. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, the flow seems to be good. And I think I'm ready to move to this bulbous part right here. You know, in retrospect, I probably could have even added more polys than I have here, but that's okay. Most of the time, when this is going to be rendered, this isn't going to be one of the primary ships in my new video. This is going to be, and this isn't going to have a very long appearance. So it's kind of, Kind of got to be efficient in align with the purpose of your creation, whether that be gaming or film. Uh, so, since this ship isn't going to get a lot of screen time, I don't have to be, you know, I don't have to go ultra perfect. Reformer says, Do you ever model the interior of the ship? Oh, um, <laughs> I've thought about it. I've actually made uh, deck plans for. For ships before just for the fun of it but not nothing in 3d so far um, I've thought about it but no I haven't I've, I've thought about doing a uh, a bridge for several ships and in fact I've kind of dabbled with that as far as actually doing a bridge okay but I need to move on towards the the dorsal section of the main hull The lines kind of provide my infrastructure for what I'm going to do. I think I need some more dark lines in here. Actually, I could, and also, kind of use this as a reference too. Looks like we, maybe we have some doors here. Oh, there's a whole section that I never added. Maybe I, you know what, I'll, I'll have to add that later. There's like a, a big section right there. I guess that's the impulse drive. I forgot to add it so I'll go back and I'll add that later but meanwhile I'll just uh, I'll do some heavy lines across and then I'll make what looks like some door structures here and um, go from there boom okay so I'll do some heavy lines let's go across let's go here And 
and I'll say these door structures they look like almost a signature part of the model so I need to make sure I leave some room for them looks like they're towards the front uh, let's come out so I can see what I'm doing okay let's see what happens if I just go straight across with this line that's gonna look a little bit weird on my model but that's okay we'll see what it looks like soon and I think I'll add a heavy line let's add a heavy line going this way and then we'll probably mess with the the door structures and the coloring a little bit boom alright I feel a need to add one more line here so I'll do that. Uh, right there. There. Ooh. Whoa. Slow down there. Okay, let's go across. And boom! Thank you, coach. I really appreciate it. Uh, Enterprise deck plans. These plans here unless you're talking to Michael but this this ship is a is an old design this t3 mover but you're probably talking to Michael okay so now I'm gonna add some something like a what I believe to be a door structure let's see right there those really look like doors to me so I'll kind of sort of duplicate that uh, okay, so to do that, first thing I need to do is just make a couple of rectangles or squares this way. And let's go here, there. They aren't really big. I don't know if they're shuttle bay doors or just, uh, they're probably just cargo doors. You know, I figure a troop transport has got all kinds of uh, various storage bays and whatnot to carry stuff, and the doors are needed to access that junk. Okay, there's that. Now, let me just go ahead and, actually, let me go back to this. go right in half here the straight line um, I'm gonna do some light lines now let's go here right there that's pretty good I'm gonna copy this light line over and put it right there there. Now, I've learned the hard way I need to save my work. I'm going to save this as a paint shop profile with all um, layers intact before I go any further. I've lost hours of work due to problems in the past, so I need to go ahead and shave. Sh shave. shave this. Ferengi say shave. You notice Ferengi can't say SM. The Shal Shrugman. Call this main hall PSP. Okay, now. Uh, what is my favorite Klingon ship from Thassa, Lalsa Klingon? You know what? There is a ship uh, from Thassa that I have recently fallen in love with. D10 is my second favorite, but there is something called an L6 Defender, which is a model. If you have a chance to stick with me, I'll show it to you. I've actually created the model for the L6, and as I created it, um, I fell in love with it and decided that is now my favorite non-canon Klingon ship. Okay, I'm going to add another color layer here. We'll just call this Colorations. And, okay, I'll see you later, Sulfurus. And... We're just going to make this a uh, kind of a dark gray to outline. This is sort of like a door. A 
let's see. Whoa, that's not what I want. That's a gradient. So a solid color. Boom. Klingon B10. Don't you mean D10? Something's wrong. Let's see what lines we do. Uh, oh, that's better. Okay, I need to take this layer down. All right. So here's a. Diff We're gonna go ahead and save this as a is a diffuse uh, bitmap now that we have a door there and then I will save a separate one as a bump bitmap I've always loved the D7 as well especially the uh, Katinga B10 do you have a link to that I will look and see what what it is you're talking about I know there are some um, Maybe that's a battleship. But anyway, I'm going to save this. I'm going to go ahead and replace the diffuse. The facet dreadnought, okay. Huh. I did not know that. Alright, now I'm going to save the bump version. Let's go up to about 60. -ish. I think I decided 70 40 was going to be my. Ratio, something like that. File, save as main hull bump. Save. Boom. Okay, let's see how this is looking. Uh huh, uh huh. Start to look like ship a little bit. Uh huh. Well, oh right, I remember seeing that the the B10 Turtle of Doom, Michael. Yes, I'm starting to remember. Um, by the way, I know there's not a lot of you watching right now since I I haven't consistently streamed, so I don't have a very big audience yet as far as streaming. But there are super chat clips available. If you want me to play one, send a super chat and I will play it. Just say what number. I'll give you a quick preview of what one might look like. Just preview. <laughs> They're just CG animations, CG clips. Um, okay, back to this. I'm going to go ahead and look at this at another angle. So I've pretty much got, I think I've almost done with most of my line stuff. Um, and I think it's looking okay. Clearly, there is a little bit too much shine in here. Oh, that looks... It's a bad angle. Sometimes, if you render at a bad angle, you can see all the... Uh, all the jagged edges. In fact, you can kind of fix that by... lowering the strength of the bump, bump map. Sometimes on these big ones, you go down to 12 on this bump map strength it looks a little better but sometimes it's just the angle see from this angle that looks better you don't see all the jagged stuff yeah I have um, I have the Klingon ship recognition manual Michael I never got a hold of the Romulan or the Federation one uh, However, Brad Torgerson's site the the uh, is really good. It has just like everything um, codified there. But anyway, okay, so that's looking all right. What kind of detail do I want to add next? I'm actually going to add some something like some plating in some places. Maybe I'll darken the center right here. But I'm going to add something like some higher bump plating. You know what? I think I'll also make... I'm going to go ahead and copy the main hull down to the specular level. And you're going to see a difference here. Yeah, yeah, that's much better. So how much the, the uh, light shines is certainly a factor how this thing looks. Obviously this heat vent is probably going to be pretty dark. 
so that's the way I want it it doesn't need to shine back a lot of light so that's looking much better um, okay I think this is looking pretty awesome all right I'm gonna add another layer to my uh, to my uh, thing I'm gonna call it bump medium because that's just what I do. I could call it bump high, but I'm gonna call it bump medium. It's gonna be an elevated uh, bump layer. And um, so we're gonna make it white. And we're gonna add something like some plating and some hopefully strategic places. I know one place where I can add that. And that is gonna be, uh, by the way, Sulfurus, I'm sort of distracted by your comment. I recently did a video, a couple of videos in Elite Dangerous about exploring the solar system. Um, and if you play Elite Dangerous, they get a lot of things right as far as uh, astronomical correctness. They get a few things wrong because it, you know, obviously we're making discoveries all the all the time about astronomy. But Elite Dangerous does a really good job. You know what? I don't have any real Starship models. I, I'm a little bit of an outlier in the whole Starship community on YouTube as far as having a physical model. I would like some. I just haven't had time to build any. I, I would. Uh, I probably should get some from Eagle Moss at some point. And, uh, you know, it would just be a good thing to have. Alright, so I'm going to add some plating on this sort of door structure. I think that would be a good aesthetic and we'll do you know what I'll do one right here big ass plate right there yeah I agree Michael uh, enterprise being about the uh, that, that temporal Cold War stuff um, kind of lost me and then I I got back into Enterprise, especially in Season 4, which is a, a fantastic season as far as Enterprise goes. Um, most Star Treks don't really hit their stride until about the third season, and dare I say, I don't want to stir up any kind of uh, heat, but I think Star Trek Discovery isn't going to really hit its stride until maybe towards the end of season two <laughs> but um, yes I agree science and Star Trek is always a great thing and it's kind of been missing a little bit there's so much time travel in Star Trek these days it used to be that um, you would very rarely get time travel in Star Trek and now it's like every other freaking episode there's some sort of time travel going on and it just like time travel kind of it just hurts my brain <laughs> all right we'll call this a we'll call this a bump mat and I'll say, see how these plates are coming across yes sometimes I hesitate to touch it with a 10-foot pole. If I even mention Star Trek Discovery in one of my videos, I get at least two or three comments angrily saying, Discovery is not canon! Roar! They get, they get pretty uh, passionate about that. Alright, this is cool. However, it's a bit of an anomaly having this much bump detail in one place compared to the rest. So I need to add, I think what I'll do is add something like a spine type situation here. And uh, add some bump texture there. And I'll be adding some probably between the, uh, the lines here and there. Sometimes I'll just got to go with the flow. Now, I also think this bump texture is a little bit too strong. Let me take the bump medium down to about half of what it was. Uh, okay. Now, let's do something over here. I'm going to go, I like the aesthetic of rounded rectangles. 
because I think they just look kind of cool. All right, so we'll put that there. And I'm just going to copy these on back. Along this middle area. So it'll kind of look like the ship has got something like a spine on it. Maybe, maybe Cleon ships do have spines. They're very bilateral. So maybe they have like a spine structure going through the top and the bottom. Kind of like a uh, keel on a boat. Oh, I seem to have lost where I was. Okay. Okay, here we go. Let's see how that's looking. Shave. Shaving. All right. Back to 3D Studio Max. Oh, you can't really see that. I think I lowered the uh, strength too much. Let's go back up a little more. Let's go up to about, oh, 70-ish. Save. And... Okay, did I, hmm. Okay, yeah, I like that. That's pretty good. Okay, now, get an overall feel, feel for this thing. I think there needs to be some bump textures, some plates here in the pylons. Not too much. Um, and then we will move on. I also think there needs to be some color. Let's see here. I think there needs to be some color right here along the uh, center spine, so I'll add that. Catch up with your chats. Michael says, my favorite starship was the Leif Erikson. Okay. Uh, and then uh, Sulfurus asked, does FASA mention anything about the interior of the T3? No, actually, they they don't. There's not much, um, not much background lore. There's about three or four different Klingon assault ships uh, in uh, in Thassa, and one of them looks really. I mean, it, it looks very unusual. But um, but this was the first. So. I'm really looking forward to showing y'all the um, Klingon L6 Defender, which is the Klingon L6 Defender. It sounds like some of you guys are in the know, but the Klingon L6 Defender is sort of the answer to the um, the Larsen. I mean, no, the Loknar class. And uh, those of you who are familiar with that, and if you're familiar with the power uh, in the FASA game rules, the Loknar class is one of those ships kind of like the Defiant uh, where it's you know it's a, built for fighting Lochnar class frigate the L6 Defender class frigate is sort of an answer to that and it'll be really awesome when I get get a chance to show you all that I'll probably bring it up towards the end of the video okay so now I'm gonna make a diffuse map I'm gonna make the bump medium about 20% transparency on here and main hull diffuse replace it it's pretty hard to beat the Enterprise as far as just a good design you know it's balanced it, it works well the original Enterprise um, as far as Enterprises go I still think the original or maybe the motion picture Enterprise is my favorite. Uh, and then, of course, a close second, a lot of people disagree, um, is the Next Generation Enterprise. Not at first. At first, I didn't like it at all. Back when I was a kid and starting to watch TNG, I was like, well, that's dumb looking, but... It grew on me, you know, it's very sort of 
organic, but the design grew on me. Discovery has not grown on me yet. It still looks a little bit wrong to me. Uh, it's grown on me a little bit, but I haven't been able to completely accept it yet. Okay. All right, so this is looking pretty good. I feel like there needs to be a little more detail on the top. So I'm probably going to add some light lines to connect these doors. And um, then I'll probably move on to another angle. I still need to add some bump texture down here on the pylons. So, all right, let me do that first. One could keep on going for hours and hours as far as texturing, depending on how much detail you want to put into it. Um, okay, let's be funky here. Bump medium. I'm going to see what happens if I put just a little bit of high bump here at the edge of this um, hole plating. Because why not? Oh, that's not the right color. Turn this up. And let's do another one here. And there. There we go. And let's just do let's do some right here. Might I might lay this out a little differently than the others. Add a little bit of separation here. Okay. There. Uh, let's see. You know what else I'm going to do? It's a little bit funky. I feel a need. I'm going to go back to my lower lines and add something like. structure here it makes it look as if so I'm going to add some low bump here whoa wrong color let's go black make it look as if there is some structural engineering thought let's see that's not quite right into uh, how this pylon connects by just simply adding some uh, some rectangular things here and boom okay there let's go back here and go wasa wasa and right here now let's see what I've done here oh also light lines over here Kind of outlining this door. Let's go here to there. Yes, and then let's go here to there. And um, boom, good. And then let's go here to there. Ah, getting this straight is difficult. Sometimes it's better just to copy some lines that are already straight. Okay, and then there to there. Alright, I'll just make it longer for the purpose of making it straight. And then, oh, I'm going to get straight. We're levitating elephants here. We're levitating targs here. It's not easy. Ah, good enough. 
get rid of this. Actually, it kind of works for me. I'll just leave that. Okay. All right. Let's say, let's go ahead and uh, let's save a bump map and see how this is coming along. Bump medium needs to come down to about 60%, 65, something like that. Lines down to 60. White lines are at 40. That's good. Okay. Now let's see what I've accomplished. Save as bump. And then, then we're going to make some more changes to the colors. Turn that and save as diffuse. I have to kind of do this every time. This screw around with the settings so that um, the color portions are everything that I need it to be. And uh, save that as our diffuse or our, I guess that would be the normal color map. There we go. All right. Here we are. Here we are. Okay, so can't really make out a lot of the the higher bump textures down here, but that's okay. Um, probably what I'm gonna do, as far as the bump texturing, I I think uh, this is pretty much the way I, I like it. Uh, do I need more detailing? I don't know. Probably not. For I think it's time to move on. We'll probably move on to the front. And a lot of the front is kind of blocked by this other structure. So, but that's all right. Um, actually, before I move on, I'm going to go ahead and put some Klingon uh, text over here. Luckily, I've already created some uh, Klingon text uh, in my other model, and one of my other, my L6 uh, texture. So I'm going to grab that. You can see it all right there. And I'm going to copy it over. Let's see. Where? Oh, it says signage. Okay, yeah, that's what I want. All right, so let me just grab first off. I'll grab the Klingon emblem and find a home for it. Take this side. I don't speak Klingon. <laughs> I know Kapla. I know was it Nukne is sort of the greeting. It means what you what you want. I know what a bat left is. I know the tag. I don't know that much Klingon. That's kind of big. Not sure if I want it there either. Uh, I think I'm going to put it up here on the main hall somewhere. Whoa, that's too. Oh, I forgot to create a new uh, layer. Let's see, I'm going to go down here and call this signage. And I'm going to uh, change the size as well. Oh gosh, that's not right. Why is that? This is all wrong. Let's let's do let's do it this way. Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. I need to paste this as a new layer. Uh, where'd it go? What's Tagbe mean? I don't know what that means. My Klingon is not that great. There we go. Okay, that's too big, obviously, so let's bring the size down to about half. Well, the uh, I just resized the emblem, I think. Indeed it did. Okay, good. All right, and then let's take some uh, 
Klingon text here and put it on there somewhere. Which I already created for another ship. Grab it. I'll probably put that on the... Uh, I don't know what this says. I, I know it says something. I don't remember what... I think it, it actually does say something. I don't remember what it says though. So I'll put it right about here. I need to rotate it around so that it's ooh, so that it's flat. Right about like eh. proving a challenge. How about right? Like, that looks pretty good. Uh, the size is a little bit big. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll try it this size and see how it goes. Okay. All right. Okay. Save. Yes. All right, let's have a look. Let's see what this is looking like. Do you guys think maybe I should move those emblems down on the wing instead, down on the uh, on the pylon? I kind of have a I have an urge to do that. I'm not sure if I like it right here. Maybe I could make the text. A little smaller and uh, move the uh, emblem yeah I don't like where the emblem is hmm let's do that that's just me I don't know what you guys think but that's just me so let me do this this is aligned very well I'm gonna put it here and then just um, make it a little smaller okay apply and take the Klingon emblem move it right there maybe right about here all right. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I kind of like that better. Ooh, this text needs to be moved back just a bit because it's, it's kind of on this plate detailing. But yeah, I like this much better. What if we just... This text here. This text could be moved. Like way over here. Why not? And this is sort of the perfectionist in me kind of getting carried away. But... Alright, so I'm going to put it... I'm going to put it... Let's try that. Save. All right, let's have a look here. No, I don't like that either. I have a better idea. <laughs> I'm going to take this text, I'm going to put it a long ways. So, rotate this thing. And bang. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. A little bit vertically. I think that that would look better. Let's have a look. 
Yeah, I kind of like that. Yeah, I like that more. Um, let's see. Yeah, you'll notice that it looks like I have the same same texture applied over here, but that's fine. I'll fix that later. Okay, so yeah, that's looking. I kind of like that better. All right, so before I get too carried away on detail, this doesn't have to be very high detailed. I better move to the front and start working on that um, and kind of keep the level of detail even throughout. So let's move towards the front, which is represented right here. And let's do some, let's see, let me rename this layer so I know what I'm working with. Call it signage. And um, let's go back to lines. And I'll put some lines all up through here. Boom. Let's see if I can make these, these as curvy as possible. Make things a little smooth. I also intend to uh, put something like some heat grating on the front too, like most Klingon ships have. Oh, okay. Something's not right. Okay start with that do another line like there and there sort of separate the uh, hull and the pylon looks like I've got a gap here I need to, to fix fill in that gap good enough And I'll do something similar along the bottom here. There we go. Um, and then, hmm, I'm going to go ahead and skip to bump low, bump low, and I'm going to add another sort of like grate. I'm going to put one there, and then I'll put several down here, so here. This is going to be a gradient. See you later, Michael Maloney. And that's going to be too thick, so we will. Not too thick, but too many repetitions. Let's take this down to 15. Okay. All right, now I'll be doing something similar in the center of this pylon structure. Just like the Enterprise and most other, most other ships are sort of a, a dark inset grill of sorts in here. But it also means I need to change the angle of my gradient a bit to match repeats Let's see what this looks like angle is good uh, I feel like I need more repeats so let's try this again increase the number of gradient repeats and now we're gonna have a nice grill let's go 100 
And we're gonna have a nice sort of might be a heat dissipation grill. Um, would it make sense to have the grills or grates anywhere other than some parts of the nacelle on Starfleet ships, like above the impulse housing? Well, you know, the thinking is if, if these are for heat dissipation, the main thing is so that they face away from the ship. Um, and in Star Trek ships, they don't always face away from the ships, but you know, it is science fiction. The uh, radiators on the International Space Station extend way out, so they almost look like wings. All right, save that. So that's our diffuse. Now we'll make a bump map. Bring that back up. Light lines. Bring that back up. Oh, turn off the uh, coloration and the text because that doesn't need to be a bump texture. K file, save as. Bump. Let's see how we're looking here. Yeah, that's looking good. I think it's looking pretty good. I feel like this part right in here needs a little something. And obviously we need more lines going across here, which we will do. Maybe the top needs some more detail, I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so... We won't have to do a whole lot with the front since a lot of it is blocked. Okay, so let's uh, let me just check on my super chat status. See how everything's. See how many people I got. Got just seven watching. That's all right. I might need to time this better. Uh, ba boom! A rotating Bussard collector. Interesting. Okay. All right. So let's add some more detail to the front. I'll start with, I'll go with some light lines. And kind of follow the polys for a little while. Go in a little closer. Whoa. Zoom in a little closer so I can get fine tune this. Uh, we'll add one right there. I would think also on the front there should be some windows because it is a fairly good place for crew lounge or crew quarters so I'll probably be adding that in a second of course from here it's hard to tell whether I really need that detail because so much of it is blocked and if I'm gonna do some windows I have to make them towards the top for the most part I think I know what to do. Okay, so what I'll do, I noticed on the D7, uh, or the, the Katinga rather, there's some plates on the front that look kind of like this. I'll add some of those. I know a lot about the D7's, uh, or the Katinga's details. Someday I'll, I'll do a, a full Katinga model because it is a cool ship. Whoa, that's still in gradient mode. Let's change this to solid. All right, so what I'll do is I'll add some of these square rectangles. It is said that those are actually um, cargo pods uh, for the D7. We'll go with, let's go like that. 
All right, now I'm gonna go back to bump below and I'll be adding some windows there. Windows, so we'll do about this size. And I don't need to add a whole lot of windows. These are not big ships, but this is the uh, bump texture for what the windows are gonna be. In fact, let me go ahead and add another layer called Windows Bump. And then what I'll do is add something on top of this layer for luminosity, for the actual light color. But basically with old series ships, the windows are indented quite a bit. Add one there. Maybe I can get away with adding a couple down here. And where else? Let's have a look. Have a look at the model again. Maybe towards the edge here, I can add a couple of them. Okay, let's see how this is looking. Turn my base up and save this as a bump. That's already as I say save. Then I'll turn some things off and turn some things on and save it as a um, diffuse. Make a little adjustments. Light lines down. And save this as diffuse. And we will see that that might be all I have to do to the front for the time being. Yeah. Somehow I managed to position those windows in a pretty good place. So, yeah, I think that's going to work. Looks like one of the little rectangles I made is blocked. But that's okay. But I, I think that that works. So really the front is more or less done. So I'm going to be on for about, probably be modeling for about five more minutes. Then I'm going to show you guys what I have been working on and what I will be working on. And I know it's a risk to this channel, but I'm also creating a new channel soon by hopefully by um, mid-May it'll be launching and that new channel is going to be about lightsabers but that's a different topic so for now I'll focus on getting some of the back of this done boom, boom, boom. really all I have to do this is the back of the pylon I'm not sure what this oh I think this is the edge of the main hall here but this is the back of the pylon and the back of the uh, hull. Now, as I said before, I forgot a whole piece. Um, we look, so I'm, I'm not going to do too much because I forgot this whole module back here. I'm going to have to add that later off stream, although I kind of like the look of this open like it is. However, I'm going to stay true to the original design and I'll be adding this piece, which may be either a... Um, impulse drive it may be uh, a shuttle bay too but if that's the case all I need to do is just add a little bit of detailing I'm gonna go down to bump low and um, I'm just gonna add some solid black in here to kind of fill this in give it give it a little bit of structural detail no need to be too detailed because this thing is going to be blocked do that, add something Klingon looking, and then, yes, I wonder if, I, I, I'm debating what the name should be, I could call it Resurrected Lightsabers, although I'm not really going to be resurrecting anything, the reason I call this channel Resurrected Starships is because I love really taking old forgotten designs, like the fastest stuff mainly, um, 
and uh, putting it out there. You know, another example is the the Gunstar from Last Starfighter. And there's also a lot of games that have some interesting ships that have been forgotten and lost. And in Star Wars, of course, there's a lot of great ships that have been forgotten and lost. Originally, the name of this channel was Lost Starships. And I thought, well, that sounds that kind of has a negative connotation because I don't want to, you know, imply that I'm lost <laughs> myself. So I decided uh, to name it Resurrected Starships. And then the logo, you know, this logo next to my super chat or next to my chat here kind of looks like a phoenix coming up sort of resurrecting and so that kind of works perfectly you know um, for the lightsabers I could go with the resurrected lightsabers I could go with uh, I was thinking I could go art of lightsabers um, because I basically want to cover everything from how it can be applied to fitness, to lightsaber lore, to Jedi lore, to force lore, to technology, to martial arts, um, because this is stuff I realize that, you know, I'm kind of doing this so that I can make sure I'm in shape. I look young, but I'm not really a spring chicken, and the more that I, I um, sit in front of the computer, the more I can deteriorate over time. So just as another thing, since uh, right now I don't have a normal job other than this and well a few things here and there but um, I could you know because I have all of my jobs have since the last two and a half years have been in front of the computer that is taking a toll on me physically uh, so I have to do something else and um, to stay healthy and I think uh, a lightsaber channel with some actual physical demonstration is just the motivation I need to really uh, be in shape. All right, so yes, nerds can relate to this, um, but I think that the main thing with exercise is finding a reason and or a community that motivates you to do it. kind of wish they did a Star Trek episode about rotting in front of a monitor all day. Yeah. Yeah, they should. We've, uh, you know, in modern times, we've kind of become a little bit almost borgified uh, because more and more, almost everything you can do as things get more automated, almost every job we have these days is in becoming in front of a computer console it's like uh, <laughs> it's like when uh, McCoy told Kirk this is not about age this is about you being in front of a damn computer console when you want to be out there hopping galaxies so same thing as you get older you realize well your body's deteriorating you're not as um, active as you were when you were young not as aggressive and uh, if you want to stay young you've got to do something about that so that is what I've been endeavoring to do for the last, oh, five months or so. But uh, it's not easy. It's a lot of pain. <laughs> I'm trying to get to where I can do some of the things I did in my uh, early to mid-twenties. And um, I think I will get there, but it's taking a lot longer than it used to. <laughs> I'm trying to get this gradient right. It's not... First off, I just need... Okay... Okay, this is all wrong. Let's go. The angle needs to be 270. The repeats. All I need is about five here, I think. That's better. Okay. Yes, indeed, Sulfurus. Combine that with the plastic filled environment and uh, all the bad food. I think also, you know, as far as food goes, you know, it's starting to change a little bit, but um, so much sugar, so much uh, primitive, simple um, carbohydrates and uh, 
sugars such as uh, corn syrup, uh, which uh, is in everything. It's even in your loaf of bread. You have to really look hard to find a loaf of bread that doesn't have corn syrup in the ingredients. And, you know, soda. They, got, they put just a little bit of salt in soda to make you thirsty enough to keep drinking soda. So that's another thing. And it's full of uh, high fructose corn syrup. So I try not to drink sodas. Once in a very blue moon, like once every three weeks, I'll drink a soda. But I'm, I guess, so addicted to uh, fried foods, too. In the case of Poland, we have China level smog because all our coal mines got pretty much shut down and civilians can't use it for their chimneys. Forced to use trash and plastic now. Oh, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Okay, so here's the. Uh, all right, I need to make one more save for the bump map. And then I think I'll just uh, transition to showing y'all the uh, upcoming works in progress. And uh, then I'll be calling the stream. C70. That's good enough. Okay. File save and we will call this main hall bump. And if it looks good, I'll save it as a PSP file. Hopefully, this section right here will be covered soon. Um, and hopefully, it won't take me long to add what looks like a pretty complex module to the back. But personally, if I were to keep this ship as a design, I would just leave it like it is because I really like this. And then I would just sort of plug in some some form of uh, impulse engine right there. Um, who knows? Maybe that's what I'll decide to ultimately go with. I still have the bottom of the main hull to do. And I still have uh, this connecting part, which could take a little while. But I, I'd say that probably I have... You know, when I'm working alone and not live streaming, I work much faster. But I probably have less than um, two hours left to finish this ship, uh, and then it'll be done. So, but I'm going to save this, and then once this ship is done, I'm almost done with all the ships required to do the part two of the Four Years of War series. And I always overcommit to my projects. And uh, let me show you one of the ships that I'm, as I modeled, I, I really felt is a cool ship. The L6 Defender. Look at this thing. So, yeah, there's actually a story about how this thing and it's actually, I haven't added any of the disruptors yet, but, um, you know, I'd really like to make a motion picture era version of this. This is sort of like a, almost the size of a Katinga, but streamlined. Uh, and um, from almost any angle, it looks pretty cool. In my opinion, in my opinion, you know, you guys might hate the ship, but... In my opinion, this is a freaking cool clean-on ship. And uh, this is, after I modeled it, I realized, okay, this is, good. This is one of my favorites. Definitely. It's just, just still looks clean-on. Um, I haven't added the disruptors on. There are apparently a lot of aft disruptors. There's, basically, it's got almost uh, an even, unlike most Klingon ships that have most of their disruptors going to the front, this one has almost an even distribution of disruptors all around it. And um, in the encounter in the lore, the Starfleet ships were surprised to find, oh, this, this thing won't die, and oh no, it's got aft disruptors too. They got around the back of it, but it fired aft disruptors and uh, continued to kick ass. And I can't remember what the conclusion was. I think maybe it was an inconclusive battle. But um, anyway, 
uh, uh, yeah. Well, obviously it's going to have the the two disruptors, uh, the signature two disruptors up here on the front of the sort of hat module. Personally, it doesn't specify, you know, where where they are in the facet lore, but I'll probably put two here, two on the bottom, um, and then maybe another set along the wings somewhere, and then some one here and one here on the bottom of these on these spikes from the wing here and uh, that's what I'll do but anyway so yeah I'll tell you what let me show you while I'm here let me um, let me go into creator studio and show you what the lightsaber looks like. Actually, I could just do it on camera. Uh, channel, let's see. I really got on that all right. Oh, that's still going. Okay, video manager. Let's do it that way. Uh, cannons or tubes sticking out? Probably not. Uh, but anyway. So I've been working on this uh, lights. This is me doing some lightsaber stuff at the beach. This is uh, the lightsaber, the first lightsaber I built called, um, I call it Wave. And uh, as you can see, it looks pretty cinematic. It's got a really strong LED strip going up the, uh, going up the bottom, going up and through some polycarbonate tubing. And now I'm just learning how to use it and uh, that is taking a lot of conditioning up in my arms and my wrists because this lightsaber I think is about three pounds so it's taking me some time to figure out how to use it well but um, anyway I'm excited about that I don't know if you guys are into lightsabers but I thought I would show you because I think it's cool anyway all right with that I'm gonna end this stream and until next time Space friends.